So welcome back to the show. We've got a young man who is a, not a scientist, right? No, go to school for chemical engineering. Chemical, future chemical engineer. And what's your um, thoughts on, are you inventing something right now? You've got, you got a thought on what's going to make the world a better place? Uh, probably like nuclear energy. You think we should stick with that? Yeah. Probably transition into uh, low pressure reactors instead of the fast breeding reactors that we have. What about hydrogen? Uh, that's the most prevalent um, material on the planet. And um, if you make hydrogen hydroxide out of the H2O from the air, it's almost a perpetual energy. Um, uh, that's really hard to do <laughs> if you capture, like, try capturing hydrogen. That's like nearly impossible to do. I've got friends that are doing it. I've got friends that are doing it. It's quite hard to do. They grab the uh, HDO from the atmosphere. They grab the water from the atmosphere. They, they extract the, the most the hydrogen. Time, it takes more energy to do that than what you get out. Right. It's very hard to get right. more energy than what you put in. But Correct. With nuclear, if you do. Uh, salt-based reactors, then it's actually a, a high heat, not fast breeding reactors that doesn't create plutonium, and you can throw your plutonium in there, and then it actually continues the reaction. That's something that's more sustainable. Okay, well, that sounds that good. We know about well, let me ask you something. We're talking nuclear. It's a very dangerous uh, substance, obviously, um, plutonium. What about the 200,000 gallons of radioactive water that's flowing out into the Pacific from the Fukusaki? Fukushima. Fukushima. Well, actually, say right. that's still quite bad. They actually have uh, plutonium at the bottom of the ocean that they can never get. Right. Because it destroys robots, the beta particles. But the thing about the salt reactors is you can take that plutonium and you put it in there and it makes it more safe. It gives you a lot of uh, products that you can actually utilize in the medical field and for other purposes. But if we have more problems like we're having with Fukushima, what Fukushima. Fukushima, I have to find. But that's good. that's the point. Like this is a reactor that will get rid of your waste. Okay. So then you can throw your waste in there to start the reaction and it lasts about 30 years and you can bury it. You don't need water to cool it off. Oh. You do a gaseous space coolant. Very nice. And, and are you making those now? Uh, no, a lot of research has stopped on that. They made them in the 70s and basically the nuclear atomic energy just like shut it down the hole. Why would they do that? Because they had all their money invested in fast breeder reactors and it doesn't create uh, bomb break to a Again, nuclear. it all comes down to money and greed. Yeah. And uh, that's why a lot of companies will buy a company and, and shut them down because it, it's, it's, it's conflicting with their company. Yeah. Well, a lot of the uh, Mark I reactors, they have these uh, rods that stop the reaction from going on, uh, coming in from the bottom. So that's the big issue. You want it to come in from the top. Because if it does that, you have like, you don't have that much of a gap to stop this very hot fuel from burning through okay. compared to having these rods come in from the top. That's actually a really big issue with these Mark I reactors that are, there's still a few that are being used. But um, those all create bomb grade plutonium. So and I thought they were using plutonium to, for the reactor. They're making plutonium? It makes plutonium, yeah. Because you have a, a mixed pellet of U-235 and U-238. And also there's like plutonium-based pellets as well. And you can extract, you have to extract that in order to use it. And yeah, it's not a good process. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have a reactor that takes the the spent fuel and makes it into non bomb grade material, right? Then you're. I feel like that's a better way to go because we already have so much of it. And they've got um, they put uh, nuclear reactors in submarines. Yeah. And for ten years, you've got uh, an engine with fuel. Well, there's a big problem with that one as well because a ton of them leak into the uh, ocean. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> they, they didn't really... The people that made it knew what they were doing, but it was kind of like, what's the better of two evils at that time? Russia, U.S., or like Nazi Germany, U.S.? I, I just got a feeling that, you know, our progress might be our detriment. Because if, nu if we have more 
Fukushima is. Fukushima. Fukushima's. Um, we're gonna pollute our oceans. We're gonna pollute our atmosphere. We're gonna. Oh, the ocean's still polluted. Yeah, I know. It's I the Pacific's any, done. It's toast. I wouldn't eat any fish from there. Yeah. Honestly. Oh, uh, it's one of the biggest oceans on the planet. Yeah. And it's toast. Yeah. And no one's talking about it. And no one's doing anything. Yeah. People are saying, oh, it's fine. No. Actually, that- the uh, a lot of fish populations have uh, dwindled because of it. And you find, if you go fishing out there, you'll find fish with mutations. tumors. Yeah, mutations. It's terrible. But... Uh, the half-life of plutonium is so what, 20,000 years. Can we years. ever solve that problem? No. We can't solve it. <laughs> so just one nuclear accident ruined one of our oceans. Yeah. Now we're going to have a couple more eventually. Well, they need a... to get rid of all the Mark I reactors. That's okay. the problem. It, was dis- it has a faulty design, and they know it, and they're not getting rid of it. Like GE is the one that made it. And it, to, <laughs> to accept responsibilities, it's going to cost them money. Oh, billions billions <laughs> and uh, that would hurt the stock price I mean, yep. investors would get hurt so it's, you're going to pollute no, the, the, our, the our, our is not worth enough to clean up everything this is terrible terrible yeah. news this is an uplifting show <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately this is a very downtrodden well that's why you like go to these other reactors that can actually minimize this because so like what's in what's in the ocean already you can't get out because right. if a robot goes down there, the beta particles are going to sh- destroy it. If you make a hardened, a hardened uh, microprocessor with diamond, then you can do it. But there's no such thing that exists. Yet. Well, would you please invent one? <laughs> I don't know that much about microprocessors. <laughs> Sounds like you know a lot. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> enough to be dangerous, as they say. Uh, lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your goal in life? Um. Finish school. See how that goes. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small goal. That's a good one. Yeah, little long goals term, at a time. Long term goal is to. I got a feeling you should really save the world because we're in big trouble. Well, first you need your degrees or else nobody listens to you. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they won't give you money to do the proper research. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, so. Little goals that will make big strides later. Well, where'd you graduate from? Oh, I haven't graduated. Oh, you haven't graduated? No. I'm okay. going to school now. Where? Uh, Santa Monica College in UCLA. Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. Thank so, you. Please save the world <laughs> from nuclear disaster. <laughs>